Hi, welcome to SolveAndGo.com. This is a differential equations question, and it deals with a, a second order um, differential equation with, whose auxiliary equation has repeated roots. So let me give you the initial value problem. We have 9y double prime plus 12y prime plus 4y is 0. y of 0 is a, which is bigger than 0 y prime of 0 is negative 1, and part a asks to solve the initial value problem. I'll abbreviate that IVP in, in differential equations videos. Okay, so we get the auxiliary equation, which is as follows. Um, 9r squared plus 12r plus 4 equals 0. So we factor this to get 3r plus 2 squared is 0. So you can confirm that for yourself. And then we end up with the repeated roots r1 equals r2 equals negative 2 over 3. Okay, so those are our repeated roots. Let me give the solution in that case. So we know from, say, our textbooks that the solution would have the form y equals c1 e to the negative 2 thirds t plus c2 then times t e to the negative 2 thirds t. So the idea here is that we need two linearly independent solutions. Um, so we need to stick a factor of t in front of this function e to the negative 2 thirds t um, because then we can be sure that this function, no multiple of this function here will give this one because this has a factor of t and this doesn't. Okay, and c1 can only be a, um, a, real, a real multiple. All right, so now we need to find the coefficients. So we'll plug in our initial conditions. y of 0 is going to be c1 e to the 0 plus c2 times 0 e to the 0, which equals c1. And we know that's this number a. Okay, so we have c1. Now let's take the derivative to find c2 y prime of t equals negative 2 thirds c1 e to the negative 2 thirds t plus, well here we're going to use the chain rule. So it's c2 times the derivative of t which is 1 times e to the negative 2 thirds t plus c2 times t times e to the negative 2 thirds t and then we need to multiply by negative 2 thirds because of the chain rule. So I'll stick that over here. And we're told this is, uh, well, OK, first we need to plug in our initial condition. So this is y prime of t. And then we see that y prime at 0 is negative 2 thirds c1. This plugging t equals 0 in here gives makes this a 1, <clears throat> plus c2. And then this third term is 0. And we're told that this equals negative 1. <coughs> so um, we're going to solve for c2. We know that c1 is a. So we get negative 2 thirds a plus c2 is negative 1. And then solving for c2, we get c2 is 2 thirds a minus 1. And then finally, we can write out our complete solution. We get y equals a e to the negative 2 thirds t uh, plus c2, which is 2 thirds a minus 1 t e to the negative 2 thirds t. OK, and that is the solution to the initial value problem above. Now, part B of this question um, asks the following. So let me erase this. I'll write up the solution again. We had y equals a e to the negative 2 thirds t plus um, 2 thirds a minus 1 t e to the negative 2 thirds t. OK. Um, so, part B says to find the critical values of A of A that separate 
solutions that become negative from those that are always positive. Okay. So, what does this mean? Um, well, for some value of A, A is some positive unknown constant here, uh, for some values of A, these solutions here always take positive values for all t, and for other values of A, um, some of the values of this solution are negative. And we need to find out for which A these solutions change from always positive solutions to those that are sometimes negative. Okay, so let's factor what we have above. So we can factor out e to the negative 2 thirds t. And then what we're left with is a plus 2 thirds a minus 1 times t. Now, we wanna, we'll look for the solutions that are always positive. So we know e to any power is always bigger than 0. So we can ignore that term here. So we're looking for when the second term here is positive. So when is this always positive for what values of t? That's the question. OK, so what we would need is the following. So I'm going to erase this. So we need a plus 2 thirds a minus 1 times t to be bigger than or equal to 0 for all t. Okay, so what would that mean? Well, let's, let's isolate t in this inequality here. So we get a is bigger than or equal to 1 minus 2 thirds a times t. We just brought this to the other side. Now, there's two cases here. One, if 1 minus 2 thirds a is positive, then we can divide by this and the uh, inequality sign doesn't change. So we'd have a over 1 minus 2 thirds a is bigger than t for all t, bigger than or equal to. So t can be any value from 0 up. So no matter how large this number is here on the left, there are values of t that are going to be bigger than that number because t can be any number at all. So here there's no solutions for a here that will make this true for all t. Okay, Again, this is just some number, depending on what a is. Um, so we can't ensure that this number is always bigger than t because t can be arbitrarily large. Okay, So we get no solutions in this case. So what if this factor is negative? So there's possibly solutions there. So if we have this being less than or equal to 0, or less than 0, we can't divide by 0, uh, then what do we get? We get that um, t is bigger than or equal to a divided by 1 minus 2 thirds a. And so how can we? ensure this happens for all um, t, well t can be as small as 0. Okay, So for this to hold true, for a to always be smaller than t, sorry, for a over 1 minus 2 thirds a to be always smaller than t, we need to make sure that this term here is always smaller than 0. Well, is smaller than 0. Okay, So we need this to be negative. We were told a is positive. So that means the denominator of this fraction must be negative. And then solving for a, we get that a must be bigger than 2 thirds, 3 over 2, rather. OK, so in our initial setup, if a is bigger than 3 over 2, then this solution is going to be positive for all values of t. Um, if a is smaller than or equal to 3 over 2, then there are negative values uh, of this solution here. 